Sabaha everybody and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to talk about the brand new Sony Xperia Pro I. This is a successor to the Xperia 1 Mark III and technically a successor as well to the Xperia Pro. Falls right in between them. Some of the main benefits of course is that it features the 4K 120Hz refresh rate display and of course some interesting optics that we have in the back. Something like incorporating the sensor from the RX100 Mark VII on a phone. This is TK and this is the Xperia Pro I. Like and subscribe and make sure you hit that bell icon so that you're always notified to whenever we have new videos on the channel. So this is the Sony Xperia Pro I. One thing I will mention to you guys is that this is pre-production hardware, which means some of the things that we have in here are not finalized, as well as there are certain functions that are not working. So today's video is not a review, it's actually more of an overview of some of the new features, specifically talking about that new one inch sensor that they have right dead center in the back of the phone. And it's really hard to miss. We'll notice that there's a size marking here on the right side and Sony mentions that they wanted to give you us, uh, basically the trinity of lenses for most photographers. This means we have a 16 millimeter uh, camera, we have a 24 millimeter camera, and then the third one is a 50 millimeter camera, which enables us to have again those trinity, uh, essentially made for video videographers and vloggers. Uh, there's also an extended kit that you're able to buy, something that also uh, utilizes the grip. This is something that Sony's had for some time. You can use it with uh, the ZV-1 or the ZV-E10. This is a great uh, Bluetooth connected grip uh, that also will work now with the Sony, uh, well here with the Xperia Pro I. One of the other things they talked about is the ability of actually using an external monitor, a very small monitor that magnetically clips and they'll have a, their own uh, actually uh, grip. This is my own on top of my own uh, grip here from the E10 that will magnetically connect to the back of the display, which enables us to actually use to see the camera. So we can use the main sensor here and have a display that enables us to see the video, even though we're watching the video. So the short answer would be is the phone will mount into a, a special customized grip with a magnetic back plate the display mounts to the back here, connects via USB-C to the actual device. And at this point, we can actually see exactly what's coming up from here. And because we are using the grip, we're able to initiate video and photo, zoom in and zoom out, as well as initiate the custom button here, all by using this handheld. Vlogging is, has never been the same, especially when we're talking about cameras of this caliber on a Sony smartphone. Now, when it comes down to the specifications, I will say that most of these specifications on this smartphone are married from what we saw with the Xperia 1 Mark III. Uh, we basically have the uh, large display that we've seen before, a 6.5 inch 4K display with a 21 by 9 aspect ratio. And this is going to be powered by the Snapdragon 888. We have the fingerprint sensor, a volume rocker, a dedicated button here for the camera. So if I press this, it will launch the camera. And we're actually going to talk about this new camera app that they have in here. And of course, we still have the dedicated textured button here to be able to do half press for focusing and snapping image or starting and stopping video. Now, looking at the top, we still have the high quality audio headphone jack, one of the microphones. And of course, when we switch it over here on the left side, we have the SIM tray, the toolless SIM tray that we're able to add an SD card up to one terabyte. And of course, the SIM card to be able to use this uh, for making phone calls, of course. Now, when it comes down to the bottom, we have one more of the microphones and of course, the bottom port here for the USB-C. Beautiful thing about this is we're still able to use video in and video out using this port. Meaning if you have a video uh, video source that uses USB-C or something that you can use, let's say like a cam link and connect an HDMI connector to it, you can actually use external video source to be able to use this as a monitor. Again, 4K 120 monitor in your pocket. Uh, one of the things I will mention also is that the connections that we have here, the 5G, is not similar to the one we saw on the Xperia Pro earlier, so there's no millimeter wave. We have 5G and it will be fast because it's going to be running uh, basically the low band 5G, basically uh, the general 5G that we have on most carriers. Um, I was able to get pretty decent speeds, 304 down, 13.5 up. And you can see here, I ran the test a couple of times. So overall, it's not going to be disappointing or, uh, on speeds. One thing I will say, though, is that's one of the reasons this is a little bit different than what we saw with the Pro. The Pro still exists, and that features millimeter wave. Now, when it comes down to the actual uh, other specifications, we do have a slightly increased RAM, 12 gigs of RAM, and 512 gigs of internal storage, similar to what we saw with the Xperia Pro. So this is one of the things that we saw from there. Uh, the material on the side, you notice probably when I was going over it, it's actually metallic with nice ridges. It's very nice and very uh, holds very nicely. And on the back, we have the nice smoky back. Uh, it's not as fingerprints prone as the glass back that we have on the Xperia 1 Mark II. This was something that happened last year with this year 1 Mark III. They removed it and they went to something more of a finish like this. The battery that we have here is still a 4,500 milliamp here. No wireless charging, unfortunately, just a wire charging at 30 watts that's going to be supported here. And it should be more than enough to carry us throughout the day. 
Now, as far as the Geekbench, I did mention to you guys, this is running the Snapdragon 888, so there's no surprise there. 1,093, and depending on the experience that you're getting there, about 20, uh, 3230 uh, for the multi-core. So pretty similar to what we've seen before. Beautiful 4K 120 frames per second refresh rate. Uh, ability to play in Call of Duty Mobile at 120 frames per second is absolutely crazy and fantastic. I love the fact that we have all of the same capabilities that we've seen with previous generations of Xperia smartphones. So the game center here, enhancer, sorry, is right there. Single shot, we have the game mode, the ability of customizing the experience uh, between HS power control, the ability of using external power without charging the battery, extended the, uh, extending the battery usage, but not only that, also allowing us to use the device without adding too much heat by charging the battery. Uh, we have the ability of customizing the different experiences between touch sensitivity and of course uh, display, set, uh, display settings. Multitasking, pretty simple. You can search YouTube, apps, and so on directly within here. Screenshot. Screen recording is also built in here. And of course, display and sound, which gives us the ability of customizing the different options with audio EQ and USB external output. Uh, focus mode or focus settings, the ability of disabling some of the uh, you know background processes so that you don't have any interruptions whenever you're playing the game. Let's go ahead and do a quick gaming sample of Call of Duty Mobile on the Xperia Pro I. Now it goes without saying that we have all of the same customizations that we've had before. So under display, we're able to go in there, set up the wide balance, the different customization options, turning it on, and you can even go in and setting up basically D61, D65 options. Um, as far as image quality and setting, pretty standard. We have creator mode that you can turn on for watching content, like 4K content on here, or you can have the standard mode with the auto creator mode kicked in for whatever certain applications turn on. Photography Pro, uh, Pro, Video Pro, and Photos were automatically added, and of course Netflix kicks on by itself. So you don't have to turn it on unless you want to stay in it most of the time. Full screen preview, all of that stuff kind of works the same way. Uh, we obviously have the display uh, size here, the dark theme, and of course, last but not least, the ability of turning on and turning off the 120 frames per second. By default, it is turned on. You can definitely keep it off if you want to, uh, but it definitely uh, adds to the benefit here. Under sound, configuration, same thing. We can customize the audio, go under advanced, and of course, turn on the different options that we want and get the best experience that we want out of the speakers that we have in here. Um, Last thing you want to do is turn on uh, Dolby Atmos and DSE Ultimate for best audio performance. And you can also turn on uh, the uh, intelligent auto wind filter if you want to. Switching back here, let's go ahead and play uh, my favorite song, Alex Grindo Jumbo by NCS Release. Definitely sounds very good. Uh, not the loudest speakers again, uh, but definitely has a really good sound to it. Um, overall, when we jump into the camera now, we have three different applications. And we're able to jump in between uh, the video and camera uh, mode. One thing to mention to you guys is the brand new sensor that we have in here also features a dual aperture functionality of f2.0 and f4. And that enables us to basically jump between the two. And it is a mechanical shutter that actually changes on the back. So you'll notice right now it's closed all the ways. So we'll go ahead and switch over to f2.4.0 and the lens or the actual lens shutter actually closes ever so nicely. So essentially you're getting more light by going to f2.0 and enabling you to take much better low light photography. On top of the fact that the sensor is actually bigger. Now we're still able to switch over between uh, basic, auto mode, and all of that. Once you jump into auto mode, you're pretty much greeted with uh, a similar UI element to what we normally see with, let's say, something like this, the RX100 Mark 7. And this is one of the main benefits here. It's using the same sensor that we have in the RX100, and now we have the ability of utilizing all of that using the all of the functions that we have in here. We can jump in between the different lenses that we have, change f2 to f4.0 here very easily, and of course get all of the image processing that we normally enjoy. And one of the main benefits here is the fact that we have the better sensor now. That means we're going to be getting much better pictures even before the processing gets happening on the device. The actual optics are better. Now, that's going to be camera number one. Camera number two, or the app that we see next one, is Cinema Pro. Now, we've seen Cinema Pro in the past. This is very, 
much the same experience as we saw in the Xperia 1 Mark III. We have the ability of customizing our experience between uh, the lens, the aperture, uh, the ISO, the daylight, as well as setting up our look. We can use Venice, different options. Uh, we can jump in and take 120 frames per second. Coincidentally, one thing that's been also changed here is that now we're actually shooting in native 120 frames per second. Our files are no longer basically compressed to a 30 frames per second, and then we have to uncompress it to get the slow motion. Now it actually shoots and presents us with a 20 frames per second, as you guys see with the little box that I'm showing you there. I shot some video using the video talk, the video pro mode, and not this one, and we'll talk about that a little bit more. A lot of cameras or a lot of smartphones have a pro mode inside of the camera. No, Sony decided to give us an actual video pro mode app that enables us to have all of the pro features meaning the benefits of the new sensor, the benefits of the dual aperture, the benefits of jumping between lenses and shooting 4K at 120 frames per second with an audio meter, a level, as well as the ability of customizing our experiences all in a simple to use app. Still functions the same way. We're able to use external audio for audio sources. We're able to shoot video and it actually has a much better frame here to be able to use it. Last but not least, it actually does work very nicely here. So if I decide to, let's say, use it with the grip, I'll go ahead and bring it up here. You'll notice right there it automatically kind of just zooms in and out to be able to use the lens the way i want it and i'm actually just controlling all of this right now um, and it's great when you take it outside you're using it with other equipment you use it with the display kit that they're going to sell um, and just to keep in mind the pre-orders for this is going to start up on the 28th of october which is in a couple of days at 7 a.m pacific standard time and they're running a promotion if you decide to pick up the phone with uh, either the vlogging kit or the grip uh, meaning the display or the grip, you get about $50 off. Or if you decide to buy all three of them, you'll get $100 off on your pre-order. So it's definitely a nice kit. The kit itself is $200 uh, for the vlogging kit. And that basically just comes in, as, the, as I mentioned to you guys at the beginning. It's a magnetic uh, mount with a grip that goes to the back of the phone. You can actually start seeing yourself with this. And what I really like about this is when I was actually uh, being briefed about this product, uh, the display itself, although it's a small display that is basically just going to be uh, for monitoring, it also has a headphone jack that enables us to actually use to be able to bring in audio sources. So you're not going to be compromising the audio jack on the phone when you're shooting with it. Definitely a very nice piece of kit. Should be coming out about the same time as the Sony, uh, as the Xperia Pro I. So a quick sample here, using the primary sensor there, shooting 4K 30 frames per second audio and video from the main sensor on the Xperia Pro I. So that was a quick sample of the audio and video directly from the main camera on the back. Um, as you can imagine, one of the main things about this is that we're gonna be able to take much better pictures and much better videos using something that has this big of a sensor. What I love about this is the ability of actually using it um, to vlog with it, as I mentioned, the kit that they're trying to put it together. This is no longer just trying to be uh, appealing to the uh, pro uh, broadcasters, what, where I feel like the Xperia Pro is trying to fit. This is trying to appeal to the more vloggers but a little bit more than enthusiast, uh, meaning somebody that wants to get serious about the equipment that they're using. Sony is definitely approaching this uh, experience with all of the necessary kit. Personally, I'm loving the fact that they have that external display that works with this device. I'm also hoping that that actually does work with the Xperia 1 Mark II and 1, and 1 Mark III because I feel like this is something that we always lack. We always have to use a blind recording, meaning I can never see myself recording with this. I'll always have to use the front facing. And unfortunately, it's still running an 8 megapixel sensor. That's something that they didn't change. But I feel like it's because they want us to focus on the main sensors and now they're making it so that we can actually focus on the main sensors in the back and use them to record audio and video. The, three mi uh, the triple microphone setup that we have in here definitely improved the audio quality, as you heard with the sample that I showed you. Uh, pictures from this obviously are gonna look fantastic, as you could see. I took some pictures over the weekend from uh, a pumpkin patch that went with the family. I also uh, went to a garden, took some pictures there. It's definitely amazing to see what Sony's capable of doing with devices like this. I will say that this is still a pre-production piece of hardware featuring a type of sensor that's a little bit new to what we've seen with Sony devices from before. So for that, I'm going to ask actually my buddy Juan Carlos Bagnell to give us a little bit of an explanation of how, uh, what is it that we're doing here and how are they able to uh, put together images that come out of a sensor like this so that we can get a better understanding on how Sony was able to get the sensor from this camera and put it into our phone. Hey there, gadget geeks. Hey there, TK. This is an exciting camera sensor to discuss. And when it comes to this pro level imaging, we want to try and put the best data out there that we can. The Xperia Pro I is using the sensor from the RX100. Now, when it's in the RX100, that's a 1 inch 20 megapixel sensor with a 3 by 2 aspect ratio. Photos from the Xperia Pro I, though, are 12 megapixel images with a 4 by 3 aspect ratio, even accounting for some cropping. 
the advantages are significant. We get larger pixels, better dynamic range, better low light performance, and superb autofocus without having to design or redesign a new sensor from the ground up, and without having to use a different pixel binning sensor like some of the larger camera sensors from Samsung. This is where we get to do a little speculating. Now, I'm pretty sure we're dealing with a crop from the RX100 sensor. I suppose Sony could be trying to use the whole sensor and then doing some kind of fancy demosaic voodoo to work down to 12 megapixels, but I think that would compromise image integrity if pixels were cut out or were missing, if there were bigger gaps in between the photo sites across the larger surface area. Also, we can back this up by checking out the real focal length of the lens. Not the equivalent focal length, but the real glass on the back of this phone. A phone like the Vivo X70 Pro Plus, which uses the Samsung GN1 sensor, has a true focal length of 6.5 millimeters. Looking at the image data from photos taken on the Xperia Pro i, the Sony reports 6.6 millimeters, and both of those phones have a similar field of view. It would lead me to hypothesize that the practical, usable surface area of both phones' camera sensors would be pretty close. When it comes to lens design, sensor size, and photography performance, Sony is joining the Mega Sensor Club in a big way, ultimately arriving at around 60% more camera sensor surface area than on the most expensive iPhones. So when Sony says pro, they really mean pro. Thanks for having me on, TK, and back to you. Thank you very much, Juan. That was definitely very appreciated there. Uh, what I will say, though, is I hope at some point I'll be able to get a chance to spend some time with uh, something that's more final product. This is a pre-production piece of hardware, so not everything was working. There were certain things that unfortunately were not ready yet by the time I was able to get my hands on it. So I want to say first and foremost, thank you very much to Sony for allowing me to get my hands on with early prototype hardware. And of course, to share this with you, because typically, you know, when there are not, there's an announcement, we hear about the phone and then it's months later before we get hands on. And this is by far one of the first times we've seen this. So if you are interested to learn more about the Xperia Pro i, I'll give you guys a link in the description below to find out more. Like and subscribe as usual. Thank you very much for the support and I'll see you in the next video.